How you doing? Here we are. This is our time together. What we're going to share today is something so powerful. We're going to talk about you being holy. Now, so when you hear that word holy automatically and, and you put you in it, you know, I am holy. Um, that messes with our minds. And the first thing that happens is everything that you uh, should be runs into your mind. You know, kind of like a, like a flood, a dam breaks and all of this stuff starts to condemn you. You're not holy. But we're going to start to look at holiness from God's point of view. Okay? The first thing that I want to tell you is this, is that Jesus couldn't please man, but he pleased God, the Father. We think that God is harder to please as far as us being holy than anything, because God is so holy. Did you get that? But the truth of the matter is, is that Jesus was holy and perfect. And he could please God the Father, but he couldn't please man. That's why he was crucified. Can it be that what they did to Jesus, God the Father saying, no, he's my son. You know, I've accepted him. But can it be that the other side, which is, no, he's not holy. Who does he think he is saying he's the Savior? Can it be that you are on that side condemning yourself? That you're not a son of God? That you're not a daughter of God? And don't you dare say that you stand before him holy. Before God. Yes? God is easier to please than ourselves. Not just other people. Are you ready? I'm not talking about a selfish. I'm holy. I'm righteous. And I'm better than everybody else. No. Because God says I'm holy and I'm righteous. I receive that. And when you receive what God says, you become what God says. And then instead of you being better than everybody else, you can say, no, because I am holy and righteous, I need to help people. And even give my life, if I need be, for somebody else. That's holy. That's righteous. Not self-righteousness, which boasts about itself. And doesn't care about anybody else. God is so holy, there's nothing holier than God. But he gave his son to unholy people. Holy always reaches to the unholy to bless them with holiness. Here we go. This is um, the New Testament, 1 Peter 1.16. For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. Now, what does God mean by that? I mean, you know, people normally look at that as, God's asking too much. God would never ask you to do something that is not possible. You know what that means? For it is written, be holy for I am holy. You know what that means? Be holy. Because the one that made you is holy. And I'm big enough. To make you holy. It's not be holy and he leaves you alone. Now go at it. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. No. It is written. Look at how he puts it. Be holy because I am holy. He, he can make you holy. Us. Look at the next verse. Ephesians 1.4 According as He has chosen us in Him 
Notice how it says, in him. So that means that what he is, is what we can be. And because he is it, he can make us it. Listen to this. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now why would he add, okay, why would he add that we should be holy and without blame? And then stop. But why would he add before him in love? You want to know why? Because he loves you enough. He loves you so much that he wants to make you holy. You cannot love above a level of making somebody holy. God sees his holiness, which without him is, an, is you cannot even approach it. You know what God says? Before the foundations of the world, I said they're going to be holy. Because I am holy. And because I love them. My love is going to bring them to holiness. Holiness doesn't drive you away from God. So you got that, right? Get ready for more. Romans 1, 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Notice what it says. It is the power of God. God's word, the gospel, is the power of God to save. To everyone that what? Believe it. You have to believe that God loves you so much that he wants to save you, or has saved you. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Everybody. Gentiles and Jews. Next verse. For therein, now listen to this, what we just read. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. How is this revealed? Reveal means you see it so you can have it. Why? Does God want you to have salvation? Yeah, this is what it's talking about. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. See, the more faith you have, the more righteous you become. Why? Because you start to believe that what God said about you is the truth. Listen to this. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live what? That means the justified will live by what? Faith. Do you have enough faith? Do you believe God loves you enough that he can make you righteous? Huh? That's what we're all exercising today. Look at this next one. Romans 4, 3. For what saith the scripture? What does the word of God say? I love that, don't you? Because see, when we receive the word, we receive what the word says. And you become what the word says. Because the word has the power to create. Nothing couldn't think. But God spoke to nothing, and it became something. That's how powerful the Word of God is. Listen to this. For therein is a rest of God revealed from faith to faith, that is written, the just shall live by what? Faith. We live a new life by faith. The old life, you don't live by faith. You live by screw-ups and sin. Now look at this, Romans 4, 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. 
He believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Are you ready? Next verse, 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us. Did you understand that? It's talking about Jesus. This is why we can be righteous and holy. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, in his image. The one that made us, his image. His image. Nothing was made without him. His image spoke everything into existence. And His image has spoken righteousness into your life. You have to believe it faith to, from faith to faith. You'll never be righteous through a man-made religion. You want to know what gave Abraham the power? He didn't sacrifice his son. But he was willing to. God wouldn't allow it. But listen to this. You know what the Bible says? In Hebrews chapter 11. You want to know why Abraham was able to go that far? Takes his son. Lifts a knife. And he was going to sacrifice him. His only son. Can you imagine? You know why he had the power to do that? You know what the New Testament says in Hebrews 11? It says. Because he reckoned that God was able to raise him from the dead. Oh, there must be one reason why God's asking me to sacrifice my own son. Oh, he's going to raise him from the dead. That's what gave them the power to do that. Read it. Read all the Hebrews 11. Because God was, he reckoned that God would be able to raise him from the dead. And that's what gave him. You know what gave him that closeness to God, that there was nothing between him and God? That's radical. He believed God's word. Because God had said that that boy, that boy would have children and descendants and so forth. Now it seems like God's contradicting himself. He wasn't. God was just trying to show Abraham in handing to Abraham, Abraham his righteousness and his holiness. Wow. That's what gave him the power. Believe God can make you righteous and holy and habits will fall off. He's so powerful. Take your weakness and take his greatness and put them next to one another and say, what is greater? This or almighty God who made the planet that I'm standing on and the heavens that are above me. I'm sandwiched in in a miracle. Who's greater? What is this thing done that's greater than God? And start thinking about it. Has it created a rabbit's foot? No. And you know how lucky that rabbit was. That's why you had to split. Compare it. Put it in the balance. And by faith say, God is it. And he's making me holy. That's how much he loves us. If you want to grab a hold of any of our material, you know, like grab a hold of. It's mine. We don't want you to go look at it. We want you to grab a hold of it. And make it yours. This is not my teaching. This is your teaching. Did you understand that? This is not my teaching I'm sharing with you. This is your teaching. Before the foundations of the world, he said that you were ordained to what? To be holy and righteous. All right. MFHLB.com. You can reach us as reach us at mfhlb.com, mfhlb.com, 
and we have all the you know archives, uh, all tons of subjects. You know, I mean, you can just reach us uh, there. But remember, it's your material. It, it's all for free. If you want to make a donation, and let me tell you something, and glory to God, we don't we don't mess around with money. We put money to work for the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God. And we use it, you name it. Missionary. We support missionaries in India. They have it rough. The last month, three martyred. Uh, you know, there are churches that, that were there. They're, well, Jesus is our covering, but we're there to help them is the bottom line. And glory to God. We feed the poor. Did you know what just happened during this coronavirus? So far, we've been able to, uh, to pass out 52 tons of food. We're a small church, 130 people, 120. 52 tons of food. Thank God for the MGM people whose hearts were touched to do that. And also the Treasure Island. And ABC trucking, you know, towing. They provided the trucks, forklift, you know, for us to be able to do this stuff. And thank God for Metro, Southeast Area Command. We work with them. That's how we find out where we need to go help. They let us know, these are the trouble areas, this is where the people, they have their, they have their hands on the heart, on the pulse of the people. Praise God, and we support our police department. Praise God. If any of them mess up, then we fall on the side of the law. If you're a cop, if you're a preacher, you messed up, guess what? You need to get right. Not just officers, preachers, fathers, mothers, uncles. Let's just receive the grace of God. Amen? Are you ready? May the Holy Spirit haunt you with His peace.